Hello students, <clears throat> welcome in today's session. I am Professor Payas Kavadi from Department of Mechanical Engineering. In today's session, we are going to discuss uh, the introduction part of gear and the material which is used for manufacturing the gears from unit number two, gear manufacturing. So let us start. Gears are extensively used for transmission of power. Gear drive is used for transmission power and the efficiency of transmission of power is more as compared to other units, that is belt drive or chain drive. As there is no slippage, there are teeth. Gear is a mechanical component having teeth which mesh with each other. So there is no slippage, that's why there is no slippage, that's why power transmission efficiency is more as compared to belt value and chain value. And gears are always used in pair. One is a bigger gear and this bigger gear is meshed with smaller gear known as pinion. So just like belt value and chain value as there are two pulleys, in case of belt value, there are two pulleys. One is a smaller and one is a larger pulleys. And in chain drive, there are the sprocket and chain assembly. One is bigger sprocket and another is a smaller sprocket. The same case happening here also for getting different velocity ratio. The size of both the gear in the gear drive is different. One is a smaller known as a pinion and one is a bigger diameter known as a gear. So that you can transmit the power with different velocities ratio. They find applications in automobiles, gear boxes, oil engines, machine tools, industrial machineries, agriculture machinery, geared motors, etc. For better working, the gear should have the following qualities or following parameters. That is nothing but a robust construction, reliable performance, high efficiency, economy, and long life. The gear should be fatigue free. That means it should withstand the repetitive loading. And if it is withstand that repetitive loading, the fatigue failure may take or fatigue stresses may, uh, may uh, suppose to come on the teeth. So it should be uh, fatigue free and free from high stresses to avoid their frequent failure. High load carrying capacity at constant velocity ratio. That means without changing the velocity ratio, the gear should have high load carrying cap capacity. So these are the requirements of uh, gear uh, in the application point of view. The various material used for gear include a wide variety of uh, metals and non-metals. Generally, the gears are manufactured with help of cast iron material, then steel material, non ferrous material like bronze and aluminum, and gears are all again manufactured with non-metallic materials such as leather, plastic, nylon, etc. Generally, in uh, our wristwatch or the toys uh, used for playing, uh, these toys, in that toys, the gears are manufacture, uh, manufactured by plastic or nylon material. So next, what requirements are uh, there to manufacture the gear? That means what quality that, that material should possess that we are going to see now. The selection of gear material depends upon type of service. Second, PV favorable speed, that is a, a rotating speed of gear. As it has a rotating um, gear is a rotating uh, machine element. So PV favorable or a rotating speed is considered for manufacturing the gear and the material which is used for selection of gear manufacturing. Third one is a degree of accuracy required. Then method of manufacturing. Some gears are manufactured by forming method. Some gears are manufactured by casting methods and some gear are manufactured by machining methods. So depending upon the method of manufacturing, you are selecting the material for particular applications. A required dimensions and weight of the drive. Now, for example, cast iron material as 
uh, the weight, different weight. And if you are manufacturing the same gear with help of steel material at that time, uh, the weight of that material uh, will be uh, different. So depending upon the application, you have to consider the material for gears. Then it should have allowable stresses. The material should uh, uh, should withstand to that stresses while um, the stresses are developing uh, during the rotating condition. So it should withstand, and the stresses should be uh, uh, should be of that material should be uh, more of uh, the whatever stresses is developing. And then, then next one is a shock resistance. The gear tooth material is subjected to impact loading. That's why it should possess shock resistance capacity. And then next last one is a wear resistance material. The material should be wear resistant. That wear is related to surface uh, stresses. It should withstand the surface stresses. So that, uh, that property is related to surface of that material or surface area of that material. And so it should have a, a wear resistance property. So withstand all these properties, the proper material is selected for manufacturing the uh, gear. Now see the what are the different materials uh, which is used for manufacturing the gears. First one is given here cast iron material. Uh, these material this material is uh, possess some special qualities for, for that it is used for manufacturing the gear. It have good wearing properties. Uh, second, excellent machinability. Cast iron is having excellent machinability. Uh, then ease of producing complicated shape by the casting method. Cast iron is having more flow ability as compared to other materials. So due to the flow ability, the molten cast iron will flow into the mold cavity uh, uh, easily uh, in uh, small cavities also while you are manufacturing the gear by casting method. So, Cast iron is having more flowability. That's why cast iron is used whenever the complicated shape is uh, manufactured. Uh, second one is a steel material. It is sufficiently strong and highly resistant to wear by abrasion. That's why the gears are manufactured by steel material also. The teeth can be machined to the required degree of accuracy and also it can be transmit heavy load. So, if uh, you have to transmit the heavy load applications, uh, at that time you go for steel material uh, for manufacturing the gears. Third one is a cast steel material. Uh, the stresses uh, on gear is high. Whenever the stresses on gear is high, at that time you will go for cast steel material and it is difficult to fabricate the gears. Next one is a plain carbon steel. Um, in which again that plain carbon steel is classified as medium carbon steel and high carbon steel depending upon the percentage of carbon. Um, in um, plain carbon steel, the percentage of carbon is 0.3 to 0.6 percent. So this material is having these properties industrial gear where high toughness combined with high strength and fatigue limiting bending and long life is your required parameter in applications. At that time, you will go for plain carbon steel material. So other than these, um, some uh, other materials are also used by using, by adding some uh, impurities like molybdenum, chromium uh, for special applications. So other than these material, a wide range of material are used for manufacturing the gears. Okay, so at the end of session, the students, you can understand the uh, material for manufacturing the gears and the required properties for the particular applications of gear. Thanks for watching this video.